Hey Defenders, welcome back. In this video, I wanna show you guys how we can build upon our previous active response example where we queried Alien Vault's API against our DNS queries made, made by our Windows endpoints to see if Alien Vault has reported a particular domain that has been resolved by one of our endpoints as malicious. And that was as far as we got with that, right? So Alien Vault would tell us it's malicious, we would see that within Wazoo, However, our endpoint would still be able to resolve hacker.com or whatever malicious domain it queried and would ultimately still be able to resolve that endpoint and know where to send its traffic. Where now what we're gonna do is add on to that and actually take advantage of a technique called DNS sinkholing. And we're going to use Wazoo's active response to help us with that. And so first things first, what exactly is DNS sinkholing? So, as we talked about in the previous example, when my endpoint says, hey, where is maliciousurl.domain? My endpoint, which will be our Windows, our Windows server here, will ask our DNS server, hey, what is maliciousurl.domain? What IP address does that resolve to? Our DNS server will then give us the answer. Hey, that resolves to 1.1.1. So then my endpoint says, okay, now I know where to send my traffic out to to get to maliciousurl.domain. I will send my traffic out to 1.1.1. Where in the event of where we have sync calling in place, when our endpoint asks our DNS server, hey, where is maliciousurl.domain? And it tells us back .2.2.2 instead of 1.1.1.1 we now send our traffic to an IP address that doesn't that isn't actually malicious URL dot domain, right? So our endpoint sends traffic to an IP address that uh, does nothing with it, right? We are now sending all of our traffic to one of our own devices, right? So now if this was a command and control server, for example, our traffic would not send out to this guy. So our endpoint would not be able to connect with the IP address that is assigned to malicious URL dot domain. And this is a really good technique to implement, right? Because if I were to just create a outbound firewall rule that blocked connections to you know 1.1.1, all the attacker has to do is assign his domain to a different IP address, and now all of a sudden my computer can reach out to him again, right? Where if we actually sinkhole the domain name itself, the attacker now has to go through a little more trouble of purchasing a new domain name and then getting that online and up and running uh, where instead of just having to change his IP address. And in, in our example here, we're actually going to sinkhole back to our local device. So we're going to actually edit our local host file that is on our Windows endpoint. That will be the first file before our Windows box even reaches out to our DNS, whatever local DNS server you may have on your network. Uh, within my lab environment, mine is just Google, so it's 8.8.8.8. But when your Windows server looks to resolve a domain, it first asks its own local host file to see if it has an entry for that domain. So before it even asks your DNS server, it looks it looks within its own file and says, hey, do I know how to resolve this domain? And if it does, it'll circumvent DNS and it'll just go right out to its destination. So the technique that we're gonna do is for malicious URL.domain, we're actually gonna resolve that to its local host, which will be 1.7.0.0.1. So when our computer says, hey, I wanna reach out to malicious URL.domain, it actually resolves that to itself. So traffic is just going to kind of go into a loop and come right back to itself rather than going out to the malicious domain. And so a little example of how that's going to work. So on my left here, here we have our alert within Kibana that we get within Wazoo, right? So we see our malicious alien vault has responded to us indicator found for our particular domain, this dogfunnyvideos.xyz. And you can see in the right snip here, before our sinkhole, when I pinged dogfunnyvideos.xyz, you see that it resolved to an external IP address that this domain is tied to. And then after the sinkholing, we see that it actually resolves to our local self, right? So our 127.0.0.1. So we have now, with editing the local host file, 
we have now routed this traffic to ourself instead of going out to this malicious domain. So if this guy was a command and control server, for example, now all of its traffic is just going back to itself. It never actually connects to the command and control server. This is really good technique to really to help protect your endpoints. But let's actually get into the fun stuff and let's get our hands on with it. So uh, uh, for this demo, I'm going to assume that you've already configured the Alien Vault portion of it. Um, we are still taking advantage of kind of that flow, right? And if you haven't taken advantage of the domain stats or the Alien Vault, I'll link to I'll link to that video below where we where we cover that in depth. Um, but here we're taking kind of the same approach, right? So we see my Sysmon DNS query out to Dog Funny Videos at XYZ. We query domain stats. And domain stats says, hey, this is a low frequency score. We don't see that this host has been queried in uh, frequently on your network, right? So we then reach out. So we then trigger our active response script that calls out to Alien Vault and says, hey, is this domain malicious? Alien Vault comes back to us and says, yes, we do have an indicator found for this particular domain. And that's where we left off in the previous video. So now let's add on to that. So now let's add an active response feature that says, hey, if we see that, if we see this rule ID trigger here, then let's go ahead and run an active response that will add this domain to our local host file and assign it an IP address of 127.0.0.1, which is just our loopback address. Let's first kind of jump into that. So. Uh, on my Windows box here, I'll first show you guys what our local host file exactly looks like, right? So if I go into C, our C drive, if I go into Windows, if I scroll down to System32, and this should be standard on all Windows boxes, uh, go into System32, I will go into Drivers, ETC, and we'll see our host file here. So I'll go ahead and open this up uh, just with Notepad, and by default, this is probably blank, um, but let's say for I want to instead of, so if I get on this guy, and let's say I ping open secure.co. So my Windows endpoint does not have an entry in that within its local host file. So it's asking our DNS server, which in my example that I'm using is Google, is it saying, hey, where, wh what IP address does opensecure.co resolve to? And Google is saying this guy. And so now my endpoint knows how to get there. What if I change that? What if I say, hey, instead I want opensecure.co to resolve to 1.1.1.1. So I'll specify the IP address and then I just give the name of the domain, which will be opensecure.co. I'll go ahead and save this guy off. And now let's see what happens. So now if I try to ping opensecure.co, we see we now resolve to 1.1.1.1, right? So now open secure, so and if I were to try to open a browser, and if I try to go to opensecure.co, we see we just get a, an, an error here, right? Like I'm not actually able to go to opensecure.co because my endpoint cannot actually resolve it, where, or is resolving it, but is not actually resolving it to the right address, where if I save this, now let's say I try to go again, to opensecure.co, we can now route to it, right? So, so, so that's the, this is the the technique that we're taking advantage of to to essentially, you know, we're not totally blocking the malicious traffic because the malicious traffic is you know going across the wire. It's just not going to the correct destination now. And this DNS sinkholing is the technique that we use to do that. So. On so we're going to take advantage of Wazoo's active response to dynamically strip out the value that we get back from Alien Vault of the domain that is an indicator of compromise, right? So in our example, our dogfunnyvideos.xyz that we see here. And then we're going to add that to our local host file as a IP address of just 127.0.0.1. 
So if you go into the GitHub here, I'll link to in the description below, uh, I have just a very basic PowerShell script that we'll need to just copy and paste onto our Windows box. Um, so here, what we're doing is in, I'm taking the, imp, the JSON that our Wazoo manager sent back to us, right? And uh, if, if that's confusing to you, check out the previous video that I just made where I explained how Wazoo's new active response feature actually works under the hood. So we're taking, and, and this is a, a very simple script. It's actually pretty easy to use, right? Now that we have this new active response feature and new capabilities that we can take advantage of. So we're, we're, taking, the, we're taking the JSON that the manager is sending back to our agent. And all we're doing is we're assigning a variable of malicious domain, stripping out this value that comes in with our base underscore indicator dot indicator from our JSON that we got back from our manager. So if we go back into our alert here, we see that this is the value that we're stripping out, right? So if I kind of put this, so if I throw this to the side here, here we can kind of follow along, right? So I'm grabbing my parameters and alert, and that's just because that's what's sent back to us via the, uh, from the manager. And then we start to strip out the actual field value I want to assign to my malicious domain variable. And in that case, our malicious domain will come into this data.base underscore indicator dot indicator. And so that's what I'm searching for with this block here. And then I'm assigning that to our malicious domain variable. And then what I'm gonna do is just add it to our local host file, right? So we see that I'm specifying the path to our local host file. I'm then going to assign to, to add this value of 127.0.0.1 and I'm going to, uh, this T here is a tab within PowerShell. So PowerShell will add a tab. And then I'm taking the value of the variable that we got within our base indicator, ver base indicator dot indicator value and adding that here and then doing the dash force flag to, uh, to force that adding of content to, to this file. So pretty simple script. And what we'll do is just copy this guy. So we can copy this guy, get back onto our Windows box. And here I've put mine under C Windows. Um, you do need PowerShell 7. So if you don't have that, uh, make sure you install that. PowerShell 7 is needed so that we can parse through the JSON that the manager has sent back to us. Uh, and so I have my PowerShell 7 directory, and then here I have my malicious underscore domain uh, PowerShell script, where we'll see the same same contents here as well. So, so you would just create that, save that off, and then the last thing that we need to do is within, well, two more steps. Uh, one of the last, the second to last step we need to do is add to our active response a binary directory within our active response directory, right? So I'll go into active response, go into bin, and here I have this command uh, that I just call domains. And if I edit this guy, which I also have pasted in the GitHub as well that I'll link down to, uh, so our domains.cmd. And what, all we're doing here is we're just calling PowerShell 7 to then run our PowerShell script, which is malicious underscore domain.ps1. So if you have saved these into a different folder, just make sure you reflect that there. Uh, but our domain, which, you know, these can be, our, our PowerShell scripts can be in whatever folder you want to use, but our domains.cmd script, that needs to be in this specific directory. So our OSEC agent active response uh, slash bin. And then the last thing we need to do is actually tell our Wazoo manager when to run this new active response feature. Uh, so, and that's simple. We can just open our osec.conf. So I will open this guy here and I'll navigate into var osec, osec.conf and I'll go down to my active response blocks down here and I'll just copy and paste exactly what I have uh, here. Exactly what I have in the GitHub uh, just to this block here. So what we're doing is we're saying we're the executable that we're going to call that invokes our malicious domains PowerShell script will be our domains.cmd, right? And then we're giving it a name of just malicious domains. When I 
And then when do I want to run this active response script? Well, I want to run it when rule ID 95 or 91580 triggers. And if we look back into the Kibana, this is the rule ID that triggers when Alien Vault has found an indicator, right? So so this is when this is when I want that active response to trigger when Alien Vault says, "Hey, this is an indicator. We have found an indicator." And then this will trigger our domains.cmd, which will which will call and invoke, which will invoke our PowerShell script that will parse out the entry within our base underscore indicator dot indicator and add this domain to our host to our local host file and give it the loopback address, right? So that's kind of the flow of how all this is working kind of under the hood, right? So we're first actually in taking advantage of a previous active response feature that we did with Alien Vault, right? So again, uh, make sure you check out that video if you haven't already, and then it's linked down below. So this is kind of our first chain, right? Where you are, we see a DNS query from one of our endpoints. We ask Alien Vault, hey, Alien Vault, is this malicious? If Alien Vault says that it is, then okay, let's go ahead and run now our new active response that will resolve that domain to just our loopback address. Um, and that's all we need to do. So you'll save that and then uh, go ahead and hit it with a restart. And then when that restarts, let's go ahead and see if we can uh, see this in action. And all right, so that has restarted, so now let me, on my Windows endpoint here, let me just try to ping our, what is it, dog, dog funnies or something? <laughs> let me copy this guy. And let's just ping this address. So this is before active response has triggered or anything, right? So we are able to resolve this to its actual IP address that assigned to it at that time, right? So now... If we refresh within Kibana, our first kind of workflow should start to take place, right? We should see our asking of Alien Vault, hey, is this is this domain malicious? So if we refresh this guy, sure enough, we see kind of our flow here, right? So we see our DNS query out to 83.dogfunnyvideos. We then see domain stats say, hey, this is a low frequency score. So I'm going to then kick off our Alien Vault integration. And Alien Vault is saying that there is an indicator found and with associated with this particular domain. So now that should have triggered my active response that actually makes an update to our local host file. So now without doing anything, right? Let's see if we can now if we ping this, we see it's resolving to our loopback address. So you notice that traffic is now not going out to the actual IP address that is assigned to this domain. And if we go ahead and open up our host file here, we see our entry is now made here, right? And this all happened automatic, automatically, right? Uh, we didn't have to manually come in and do this. Um, and this is a really powerful technique of how, you know, now we can first detect if an endpoint has tried to resolve a domain that is known to be malicious. But we can take it a step further and say, okay, I know this is a malicious domain, and how can I dynamically protect my endpoint from actually reaching out to this domain within real time? And well, this is a good example of how to do that. And so now again, traffic, now instead of reaching out to dogfunnyvideos.xyz at that 168. whatever address, we have now sinkholed it. So now, dog funny videos at xyz is resolving to 127.0.0.1 which is our loopback address and this is a really powerful technique that you can use to dynamically protect your endpoints and i think that wraps it up for today's video uh, again with this new active response feature that wazoo has introduced the possibilities are pretty much up to your imagination so i would challenge you guys to, to get your hands on it and see what other type of use cases you guys can come up with and share them with the community and i'd be more than happy to put them to the test and build out really solid active response use cases that other people can implement within their environments so I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one.